Hey everyone, Wes here. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys how to use animate.css. If you haven't heard of it, animate.css is this great uh, library that takes care of all the messy keyframing that's involved in creating animations like uh, flash or rubber band or something like swing. Um, so it's this great library that you can just pop into your website and you're able to pretty much add animations within uh, a number of seconds. Uh, so to get it up and running, all you need to do is click on download animate.css uh, and then include it into your project uh, via a regular style sheet link. So uh, I've done that right here. Um, for the purposes of this uh, exercise, what I've done here is I've just set up a very simple HTML document. I've loaded in animate.css. I've got ourselves a link with the class of button and then I've got an input that we're going to shake in just a second. Um, then I've got some very basic style. None of this has anything to do with the actual animation. It's simply just to set it up so it looks a little, little bit something like this. Uh, then I'm loading myself in latest version of jQuery uh, just so that uh, when we get to adding it with, J with jQuery uh, we'll be able to do so. So um, very basic use of using animate.css is simply just adding CSS class names. So you don't even need to be using jQuery if uh, you really want the base use. Uh, and the way that works is you first you give it two classes. The first one is animated and the second one is the actual name of the animation that you're looking for. So uh, we look somewhere in here uh, you could choose rubber band or swing. Um, I'm a big fan of shake so we're gonna go ahead with that. So shake, give it a save uh, and now when I refresh this button right here should shake. There we go. Uh, so you'll notice every time I hit the refresh key, it shakes. Um, so that's great, but chances are you're not actually going to be using these animations on page load. Uh, so we want to uh, have a little bit more control over uh, how this works. Uh, so things you can do with just plain CSS is if we look at the documentation here uh, on GitHub, uh, they, they show that we can change the, the duration, uh, the delay, and the iteration. So let's go through each one of those right now and, and see how that works. So I would apply this CSS to the element that's being animated. So uh, here it has a class of button. This is the one I'm animating. So here, here, here's where I'm going to do that. I'll just paste that in there. Um, and you're going to notice that it says vendor. Uh, that's just the vendor prefix. Uh, on um, different browsers you're going to make sure uh, that you need to put the vendor prefixes in there. Uh, how you know what the vendor prefixes are, a great website, you can go to caniuse.com and just search your animation. Uh, oh, sorry, it's keyframes. Uh, and you'll be able to pick that up from here. So it looks like you only need WebKit and fire uh, and plain old. You don't need MS. You don't need IE. So uh, I'm gonna I'm using Chrome right now, so I'm gonna use WebKit. Uh, comment these out for now, actually. So I'll change that vendor to WebKit, and I'll comment these two because we just want to work on duration. Duration is how long it actually takes. So by default, it's one second. Just just the shake. Uh, generally, you want to put that something less than a second to get a little bit. Of, there we go. That's a little bit of a nicer uh, animation. However, you can do something ridiculous like 30 seconds. I'm not going to wait here all day uh, or three seconds and it will go a little bit slower. Uh, second one we have is the delay. So um, maybe you're doing this uh, on a header and you want your, uh, your header to swing in. Uh, you can delay that. So maybe you need two seconds or so for the page to load. So now if I have this delay of two seconds, refresh, after two seconds it shakes. Uh, the third one is iteration count. So how many times does it shake? Uh, by default it's one. However, you can make it maybe something like four. You could see it go four times there. Uh, or you could put it on infinite, which would infinitely shake it if you really want to uh, annoy your users. Uh, so that's what those three do. Um, I'm not going to use any of those right now, so I'm just going to comment those out. Um, what else I wanted to show you was uh, kind of the more uh, 
kind of the better use case for something like this would be uh, adding and removing these classes with jQuery. So this shake that we have here uh, is great for when you're doing form validation and uh, uh, accidentally uh, someone doesn't fill out the proper information. It's great to draw attention to the input. So how do we add it with jQuery? Uh, so rather than add these classes of animate and shake right in our HTML, we're going to do it uh, when something happens, for example, a click. Uh, so I delete that. Um, I have this button here and I want to make this input shake when this button is clicked. So what we would do is we go down to uh, the bottom here, we're writing our JavaScript. Um, let's give myself a document ready. Good. Um, and then once the document is ready, I'll say a dot button, so that's grabbing the button, on click function, and then so once that button is clicked, we are going to grab the input, and I believe I gave that a name of first name dot add class, and then we're just going to add those two classes we did before, so animated and shake. So again, when I click the button, it should grab the input and add a class of animate and shake. So refresh. Now when I click this, you'll see that this input that now shakes. Great. However, if I click it again and again and again, it only does it once. I have to reload for that to happen. And that's because if we look in our dev tools here, and you can see the link in the input here. Watch this input when I click here. See it adds a class of animated and shake. However, if I do it again, it's just going to add the class again and it's not going to uh, reanimate itself. Uh, so what we need to do is uh, remove the class of animated and shake once the animation is done. Uh, now you might think, yeah, okay, that's great. Uh, I'll use a timeout. Uh, so maybe you say, okay, well this animation is one second. I'll set a one second timeout with JavaScript, wait for it, and then remove it. Uh, however, we can do it one better and actually listen for the animation uh, end event. Uh, so if you take a look at the GitHub docs here, uh, you'll note that they have these animations uh, events here. I'm just going to paste them right here. So WebKit animation end, miles of animation and MSN, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this animation end event, similar to click or hover or something like that, fires when the animation is finished. So what we can do is take these uh, animation uh, events and say dot one and I'll explain what that is in just a second. That's similar to on, uh, and I will paste those animations in there. So when any of these animations or events happen, comma, run this chunk of code. So when it's done, uh, I'm going to say this, which refers to the input, dot remove class animated and shake. So when, uh, when the button has finished animating, remove it. Remove these two classes, we don't need them any longer. So back up here, let's refresh. So now when I click it, adds the class. Now I can click it again and it adds it. So watch, watch right here uh, where the class goes on and off. So on, off, on, off. Great. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, one other kind of improvement I like to do is uh, rather than writing this out every single time, uh, same with this, is animate, shake. If you change one of these to, let's say, bounce up, then you'd have to also change this one to bounce up and it's gonna get out of sync really quickly. So kind of one optimization that I like to do is to say, uh, first of all, store the animations in a variable. So say var, animation name equals, and we'll use these guys, uh, 
and then we just instead of add class of the string we'll just pass it the variable and then we can replace that variable here so whenever we want to change the animation name we simply change it in the variable here rather than right inside of our function we also want to do that for this huge slew of vendor prefixed events that is too much to take care of uh, so what I will call it is var animation end equals all of those and then when we say one animation end it's going to just listen for all of these events at once depending on which browser you're in. Uh, the reason why we use one instead of on is because one will actually only listen for the event once and then it'll unbind itself which is great because uh, every time you click it it's not going to bind over and over and over again. So with these and variables, let's double check that still works. There we go. Shake, shake, shake. Great. So hopefully that's a pretty good introduction to animate.css. Awesome library for adding interaction uh, to your website. Uh, and I, uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks a lot.